Whoa. Whoa, babe, we got... It's it's ninety four thousand, almost ninety five thousand dollars, babe. Holy, we're gonna be. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, I knew it. All we had to do was buy one Caspa back then. Man, our lives are gonna change. Let's go. Welcome back, crypto enthusiasts. It's your boy Crypto Dakes, and I'm back again with another banger today we're gonna do a quick caspa update but not only that i want to dive a little bit deeper into hash rate and what is it why is it important and maybe you can come away with this video at the end of it understanding a little bit more about our beloved caspa and why hash rate is so important so let's jump right into the video so this week we have gone up back again crossing that 18 cent mark and personally, I love that 18 cent mark because it makes me feel like we're actually going to get somewhere soon. But we had hit it one time, of course. That was when we had the run up to the all time high of 197, it looks like. 1969, 1974, somewhere around there. But this is the first time we've hit it since then. So that was the end of June, of course, when KRC20, Cast Blacks had their launch and it failed ultimately. They will be launching, side note, Casplex KRC20 is shooting for mid to end of August. I don't think there's any need to rush. I would like to see them do this correctly this time. But we are back again over that 18 cent level as of the 15th and now today the 16th. So kind of hitting that area. And if we do jump into the TA on the charts, we can see that we are pushing these higher highs and these higher lows. And if you've been watching me long enough, you know that that's what I like to see. I like to see higher highs and higher lows because this is giving us an indication of what? An upward trend, right? So now we've got that. Uh, we have these lows here. And so I'm hoping next time, if we do get this all time high, it has got to come next either that or we pull back down so what we're gonna do we're on the eight hour time frame it gives us a nice depiction of what we're looking at uh within this range here now since we are in an uptrend we do want to identify exactly where are we in this area for price volume action so you can if you have a any paid version of the trading view application you can use the fixed range profile indicator. I have it on one of my tabs down here as a favorite. You'll just drag it from the most recent pump to the end of the chart, and then it'll give you what's called the value area, okay? So if we open this up here, you can see that our value area, we are actually in and over the value area high. So right here we've got, and I'll just label it out for you. We got the value area high. And then we've got the value area low, BAL. And then here we've got the point of control. Now the point of control is where the most price volume is actually happening within that particular value area. So what is the value area? So the value area itself is between these blue lines here. Okay, so it's just from there uh just rough sketch down to it right here so that's our value area the point of control is where most of the money tends to be traded and you can see that indicated by where this long purple candle or whatnot is sticking out all right and we actually have mostly in this area actually even less like um in this area here so right about in here and that's the most price action so all of that is between the price of 13.6 and about 14.1, all right? Now, the thing is though, is we've actually been picking up more volume in price up here than we have here, all right? So there's a reason why we're moving quickly through these price gaps, all right? So when you have this type of price gap right here, the price without a lot of uh, necessary volume pushing through it can actually quickly move through those areas because there's not too much resistance or too much, you know, 
anything holding back from the price moving either in one direction or another. That's why you see these sharp jagged lines or sharp movements upward in that space where there's not much price volume because there's nothing holding it from moving that way. But then when you get over to an area like this with price volume, that's when you start getting more consolidation. All right. So you can see that here and you can see it over here as well. So this is all creating what I think might be the next new value area low or point of control all right so right now we're probably looking to push back up to all-time highs now like i said we're looking at august or end of august even and might even push to september for the release of krc20 until then we won't know what's going to happen however i know that people are going to be wanting to pack their bags not financial advice but still it's not too late i think a 10x is very viable from this spot all right, so let's hop into the mining caspalytics and all that good stuff. So first of all, let's take a look at the rust migration. So still just barely, we're actually down from last week. We were at about 94 and a half, almost 95%, but the rusty nodes are at 93.6% or so. But we do need to get to 100% rust mining migration. And then at that point, actually, we'll be able to get a tier one listing, which will make things a lot easier for the CEXs because you don't want to write the code and get everything done for go long if they're just so close to getting rust, right? So once they go 100% rust is when I think that we're going to get a CEX listing that's tier one like Binance or Coinbase, okay? Let's go ahead and look at the mining pool stats, still number five, all right? And we're running at 360 petahash as a pool rate and total network hash rate is 419. And it's actually number five still, of course, but just think about it, like number five in the world of hash rate and of mining, it's actually the second most popularly mined coin itself so doing really really well and it's also up 7.22 percent in price for the week but there's been a lot of big numbers this week we've had a lot of push up especially after such a depressing moment in the history of uh crypto i mean it's, it was really really rough i've talked to some ogs and they're really having a tough time so looking at the hash rate it looks like we're just touching 400 petahash um and of course that's where we are at right now 419 network petahash 360 pool rates hash so the more difficulty and the more um the higher the hash rate you'll actually need more computational power more computer more hardware more electricity more everything in order to mine on your own if you can't then you're gonna have to join a pool now, if you have a pool, then it'll make it easier because then you'll all be able to help solve a block um, and then you'll be able to, you know, in essence, share the reward as opposed to just doing it on your own. As the difficulty increases and as the hash rate increases, that's just how it goes. So the more money you have and if you can spend more money on mining equipment, then of course, Go ahead, mine away. Take all the blocks for yourselves if you can. But this is the thing is we want to talk about Caspa and its hash rate, right? So what is Caspa's hash rate? We know it already. It's roughly 400 petahash. Now, this website, and I'll link it down below, it's on investopedia.com. And then it talks about hash rate and what it is. But I'm going to just break it down and kind of reference it to Caspa. So one thing, one of the key things to understand about it is its hash rate. So many people talk about it. You see it posted on uh, x.com, you know, the hash rate this and hash rate that. And it's got the orange lines and stuff you see. So in Caspa's case, these mathematical problems, it's different. It's unique because it's, first of all, it's a ghost stack, but it's still a proof of work system. Okay. 
Now, every second, miners are making tons of guesses to solve these problems. They're mathematical computational problems, okay? Now, the hash rate tells us how miners are making these guesses to solve the problems and how many guesses are being made across the entire network every second. Now, why does this matter for Caspa? Well, it's actually pretty important because the higher hash rate means more miners are working on the network, which makes Caspa more secure. It's harder for anyone to hack and or manipulate the blockchain when there's tons of computational power behind it. Literally, you would need like three times. I don't know. I think you'd need like the entire world's energy grid in order to hack and take down Bitcoin. And actually, then you wouldn't even be able to do it. You'd only be able to slow it down. You wouldn't actually be able to stop the hash rate of uh, something like Bitcoin or even Caspa because Caspa is, is moving in that direction. But Bitcoin is measured in exahash and we're not quite there yet. We're at petahash. So the hash rate affects how difficult it is to mine Caspa. As more miners join, the hash rate goes up. All right. The network automatically makes the problems harder to solve this keeps the block time consistent because think about it if you have like more people joining and then the hash rate stays the same then the blocks are going to be solved much faster so you have to raise the difficulty in order for the supply not to just get completely minted out otherwise it would just be you know completely circulating now one thing that's interesting about caspa's hash rate it might ch it changes over time so it's a newer crypto compared to some others obviously 2002 so we're going on just about four years now one thing that's interesting about caspa is how its hash rate may change over time since it's a newer cryptocurrency it came out in November of 2021, we've seen significant growth in its hash rate as much more people have discovered it and started mining it. Now, this is a very good indicator for Caspa's growing popularity and adoption. We've already seen Marathon admit starting September of 2023 that they've been mining Caspa. All right. There are different types of mining setups that people use for Caspa. The most popular is ASICs miner. Ice River makes them. They're very popular. I think they have the most profitability rate. Um, now, the overall hash rate is basically the sum of all of these individual miners, whether it's the ASICs miner or GPU. And, you know, they were GPU mined before, and now it's going over to ASICs, or oh, I think it's all ASICs now mostly. But it's these individual miners and pools all together. All right. They're all working together. And that brings the ultimate hash rate so it's also worth noting that we can measure caspa's hash rate just like other cryptocurrencies it's in hashes per second so depending on how big the network gets we might be talking about giga hashes tera hashes or even peta hashes per second keeping an eye on caspa's hash rate can give us a good idea of how healthy the network is and how it's growing over time. So going and looking back, you can see we're at exahash. So we're right there at petahash, all right? So let's talk about all of them from bottom to top, all right? First, we have kilo hash, which is a thousand hashes per second. It's pretty slow by today's standards, um, and you won't see this much in Caspa mining. Then you have mega hash per second, now we're talking about a million hashes per second. It's probably something you'd expect from more of a CPU or a very low GPU rated miner. Now this could be starting points for smaller miners. Now giga hash is going to be a, a billion hashes per second. Now you'll start to see this with small mining rigs or maybe a cluster of GPUs. And in Caspa's early days, this was how miners started out. It was uh, typically a, in the gigahash area. Now we have terahash, which is the trillion hashes per second. All right. Now, this is typically what you'd see with a single ASIC miner or a larger mining pool. All right. So as Caspa grows, we're seeing more miners in this range. I mean, one miner. So I know people like, you know, they buy ASIC miners and they just mine it themselves. Some people can't afford an ASIC miner. I've seen them anywhere from a thousand up to forty thousand dollars. 
So that's, you know, an ASIC is what people are shooting for. If you really want to start getting any significant CASPA, you probably want to start with an ASIC minor. Then now where we're at today is a petahash and that's a quadrillion hashes per second. This is usually the territory of large mining pools. So CASPA's Nash network hash rate has reached this level and it's actually slowly growing um it's not slowly growing it's actually been quickly growing and it's showing growth so next after that you have exahash per second which is quintillion hashes per second and then that's typically used for entire networks of a major cryptocurrency which is like a bitcoin and then the last one the grandest of them all is zeta hash per second this would be a sextillion hashes per second. It's so high that no cryptocurrency network has ever reached this level to date. I wonder if Casper will be the first. Now for Casper, we've seen the network hash rate grow so significantly over its short lifespan. It started in the giga hash range, moved through the tera hashes, and has reached petahashes. This growth is a sign, I mean, of Caspa's increasing adoption and security. So remember, these measurements, they're not just big numbers. These are true computational power and energy being used to secure and operate the network. So to me, that's pretty mind blowing, right? So that's why they say Caspa has solved the trilemma. Well, have they or have they not? So if you've heard about the blockchain trilemma before, it's just the fundamental challenge in the crypto world that every project, including Caspa, has to grapple with. So to quickly break it down, it's just decentralization, which is the about how the distribution of the tokens uh, and the network is. More nodes means more decentralization, which is greater for security and resistance to censorship. And then there's security, which is how resistant the network is to attacks. Higher hash rates, like we see growing in Casper today, contributes to better security. Scalability, this is about how many transactions the network can handle and how quickly. And that's really the big focus for the Ghost Egg protocol. So the tricky part is extremely challenging challenging is to maximize all three at once usually you have to compromise one or the other so let's look at some examples bitcoin is highly decentralized and secure but it struggles with scalability remember those slow transaction times yeah some other blockchains might sacrifice a bit of decentralization to gain more scalability so they'll use for example fewer validator nodes to process the transactions faster. Casper is trying to tackle these tr the trilemma in an interesting way through the Ghost Dag protocol, aiming to increase scalability without compromising too much on decentralization or security. Now, the fast block times are a part of this approach. The thing is, every crypto project has made has had to make trade-offs. Uh, some people might prioritize security and decentralization like Bitcoin. Others focus more on scalability and security. Security. For Caspa, the goal is to find the sweet spot and that offers significant improvements in scalability while maintaining strong security and a good level of decentralization. It's a balancing act. So one of the reasons why the development of this network is so fascinating to follow is because of the fact of its trilemma solving nature. So I'm curious on what you think. I hope that this wasn't too much for you, but just enough for you to understand really what we've got going on in the world of Caspa and specifically in hash rates. There's so many different things that are going on uh, that with proof of work in particular that so many don't know about. And I would love to educate you on anything that personally I find interesting. And, you know, I always learn something when I'm making these videos and I hope that you do too. So uh, just a quick glance at their page today, just cleared over 206,000 followers not too long ago. Uh, they have a video here or an image that says in progress. Not quite sure what they've got here, but it looks like they're doing, this is the Rusty Workshop. Looks like they've actually fundraised the money to get live ledger support for caspa specifically they're able to raise two hundred thousand cas which is thirty five thousand dollars at that current time yeah that's it a hundred percent plus a little bit of extra candy on the side nom, nom, nom. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope this video helps broaden your knowledge of cryptocurrency, show you a little bit about what we've got going on with Casper this week, and I'll see you in the next one. It's your boy, Danks. I'm out.